Alright, hello there everybody, and welcome to another Dota 2 Clan War cast. This is Kingdom, bringing you another game from Alienware Arena. This is Team Risk against Turn of Fate. This is from week 6 of that tournament, and at the time, both of these teams were top 10. That is unfortunately no longer the case. One of these teams got knocked lower. won't tell you who it is. But, so these are two high-level teams in this Alienware Arena. We can see some actually very interesting picks and bans so far. Dirge first ban... And I really, I'm not surprised at this. Dirge has seen a lot of play in the North American and also the European scene recently. I definitely think he's quarterback tier list on um, Skylark's Dota 2 commentary tier list system. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's really nice. And, I mean, he does so much for your team, especially in the current Trilane heavy metagame. He's such a strong offensive Trilaner. He's impossible to bring down. His soul rip is massive. His decay is such a strong nuke and reduces the total amount of damage you actually have to do to kill somebody. His tombstone is amazing for turnaround ganks. I mean, such a strong hero. Also interesting stuff that we see so far is an Invoker ban. I'm assuming this because Team Risk is a strong Invoker player. Typically, we don't see Invoker in the first round ban phase. Also... Bounty Hunter was picked up first pick, which I haven't... I've see, started to see a couple of times around this level of play. I haven't really seen it in pro games, but I'm really not surprised. He's a very strong offlane hero who contributes a lot to your team's mid-game ganking lineup as well as your mid-game farm level with track bonus gold. He's capable of doing massive single-target damage, especially against some squishy enemy supports. At the moment, the only squishy hero really is Rubik, who has some very strong defense mechanisms as well. Queen, Queen of oh. Pain picked Queen. up here. Radiant so right now, we're seeing actually a very strong team fight lineup coming from Team Risk. We've got Sand King Ultimate, Quap, AoE damage, as well as some very strong lockdown coming from the Sand King Burrow Strike, as well as Hex and Shackle from Shadow Shaman. Wards will do a lot in a team fight. Granted, Bounty Hunter isn't the best team fight hero. All he really does for your team in a team fight is the Janata Slow, as well as track movement speed. And he can pick off some supports in the background unless he's focused down, but single he's mostly a single target DPS hero, as well as a single or dual target ganker. So other than that, though, Team Risk looking with a very strong team fight. Turn of Fate, though, has a strong team fight of their own. Jakira Ultimate followed up by Tidehunter Ultimate is always very strong. Chaos Knight's actually a very strong team fighting hero. He's got a low cooldown maneuverability spell in Reality Rift, which allows him to move around a team fight and do a lot of damage. He's t very tanky, hard to bring down, and he deals a lot of damage, so you really do have to pay attention to him in the team fight. Just a very strong hero in general who... I'm, he hasn't been getting as much play as he was, say, a month or two ago, but he's definitely still a very strong hero. Naga Siren picked up here, not banned out at all in this game. Looks like Turn of Fate was more afraid of the Sven and the Ninth Stalker. This means that Team Risk's team fight is insanely strong now. Sand King has a chance to channel his ultimate while standing in the middle of the enemy team, thanks to Naga's ultimate. Queen of Pain's going to have an easy lineup for her ultimate. Shadow Shaman's got an easy ward trap now, so I definitely think this is a very strong teamfight lineup, as well as some very strong carry potential coming from this Naga Siren, who is definitely on that top tier of carry heroes if she gets that amount of farm that she needs. With Bounty Hunter Trackled, she definitely should be able to. She probably, I, I guess, is this, I don't know if this is going to be a try lane. Chen is going to be picked up here last for Turn of Fate, so it looks like they're going to run a defensive try lane with a with the Jakiro Chaos Knight, sem well, semi tri lane, Chen will be in the jungle, Tidehunter on the long lane, Rubik Solo mid is my guess. I don't, unless they want to run a dual mid, but then I don't know who would be getting the farm safe lane. Team Risk, on the other hand, looks like we'll be having, I guess, an SK Shadow Shaman, Naga Siren tri lane, Bounty Hunter off lane, and then Quap in the mid lane. They could run that tri lane aggressively. But I don't think it's a very strong, aggressive tri-lane. We'll have to see here what they want to run. It all depends, really, whether you tri-lane or not. It depends on your team and who you have as support players. I mean, any carry player can play in a tri-lane, but tri-lane support is actually very difficult to play and requires a lot of coordination as well as dedication. So let's go ahead and introduce these players here up on the Dire Squad. Team Risk, Cyber 6 on the Shadow Shaman going support build. Modest will be playing this Naga Siren. 
Rick Prepare for battle. Ricky Rusio, however you say that name. I'm not gonna really think about it very much. Looks like we're gonna have a Quap safe lane. Alright, he's gonna be playing the Queen of Pain. Round box on the Sand King. On the bottom lane, we've got Dominate Dominated Wow of Risk. It's an interesting name interesting name there. Looks like it came straight off of 4chan. He's gonna be playing the long lane bounty hunter. No, Quap's gonna be solo mid, she's just going into the jungle to ward. Um, looks like Radiant will be running an aggressive trail lane instead, which they definitely have the capacity to. Chaos Knight Rubik. Well, what the hell? That doesn't work. Maybe the... Whatever. So, Eyes of Death Perception on the Jakiro. Giggles McMuffin on this Chaos Knight. I had a feeling he was their carry player. It's a carry player name. Devdis on this Chen. PN on the Rubik. And Static Blast on the Tidehunter. Looks like we're going to have a small level 1 engagement. Sand King's going to get stunned up. And as a result, he will not be able to get into stun range. And it looks like um, Team TOF will be able to get the control of this jungle early because it's four against five. They've got all five of their heroes here. So Team Risk is not able to go into the jungle. So they'll get a, their pull camp warded off here. So, which, sh I don't know, which should give... The radiant, the advantage on this offensive tri lane. In the meantime, the here, begins. Shadow Risk is going to get an easy ward off against this pull camp. I think that wards off the pull camp. I'm pretty sure. And then also a defensive ward here, probably in this area, kind of around here. No, he's not going to drop that defensive ward. Instead, he's just going to back off. He just keeps the, uh, just wants to keep the pull camp warded. That's fine. He's going to creep block as well, get in position. No, so we are going to have Tide Hunter on the offensive tri. Uh, just on the long lane, and without a ward having been dropped, he's going to have a difficult time. They're just going to be able to pull. He should not. He won't get very much experience here. Yeah, that, d that that ward does block off the pull camp. Okay. We do see a defensive tri lane coming in. Chaos Knight gets a illusion rune as well, and should be able to get some good laning against this bounty hunter. You can see that the Jakiro has already picked up some observer wards. I'm sorry, sentry wards. Has dropped one here. Looking to deward against the pull camp, wasn't able to do so, and Chaos Knight should get free farm here, Bounty Hunter won't be able to do anything, so your Chaos Knight will get a good start, and your Chaos Knight getting a good start is really, really essential, he needs to get those first items up, he should basically get every creep kill here, mid lane's gonna be where the fun is at, we're gonna have a Rubik versus a Queen of Pain, I l think Quap really has the advantage in this lane here, um, just based on I mean, Rubik is a 600 range hero, so he does have longer attack range than Quap, which helps a little, but not incredibly too much. Quap has the Shadow Strike, which is going to be able to do a lot. And since this is most of the lane winning is going to come before Rubik's level 6 in Spellsteel, he ought to be able to get... Um, Quap ought to be able to get some lane control, because her lane control comes from Scream of Pain spam and Shadow Strike spam, which is very, very strong before level 6. So, Rubik ought to have a little bit of a hard time. Also, he I don't think he has as high of a base damage. Yeah, he's got a little bit less base damage, and I th they got the same build, though. Triple, triple GG branch tangos, which is, of course, probably the best. I'm going to say it's probably the best build to go when you're going solo mid and getting a bottle early. Give you some regen, and doesn't cost very much money, so you can get an early bottle. In fact, Rubik already has his bottle. This should contribute to his lane control attempts. Go and take a look at last hits here, really, that's hero level. Look at last hits here really quickly. We do see that Chaos Knight is basically getting free farm. Naga Siren is a little bit behind him on this top lane. Um, looks like this lane is pushing a fair amount. Tidehunter has been able to pull the lane back toward him probably from some judicious denying on his part, and I think these supports, I don't know what it is that Sand King is doing, He, I think he could have probably done a better job of zoning this Tidehunter out. You've got a very strong level 1, or level like 2, 3 range engagement coming from this dire tri lane. I should think they ought to be able to kick Tidehunter out completely out of experience range, and you see that he's actually level 3, and is a higher level than this tri lane, so that's one thing to keep in mind always when you're tri laning against a solo lane, you really need to push that solo laner back, you see where Tidehunter is now, that's where he should be all the time, behind this line, right about there, where he gets experience, see he's coming across the line now, 
because Shadow Shaman over here is just pulling. He is, Shadow Shaman is going to come around, and there is no word, word detection. If he can get around behind him, oh, he's, like, oh, he's only level 1, doesn't have any of his disables, will not be able to set anything up. Um, don't know if that's the correct choice. He may have taken it for the level 1 engagement that was potentially happening earlier on in the jungle. Oh, uh, here, he's, here he's got a level 2. That's why he's been in the jungle. He really needs to get that level of shackle up so that Naga's Iron can get into range for a net, so that Sand King can get into range for a Burrow Strike. and Because Burrow Strike level 1 is a very low range. Sand King here, you can see he's denying aggressively, starting at when the creep is at half health. That really helps out the lane, keeps the lane from pushing. Going to come forward, alright, we're going to see a little bit of an engagement. No, not going to get into Shackle range. You can see Shackle range, very short at level 1. So no action yet. No, I really think I'm a little worried about this try lane on the top lane. They're really a little bit low on levels. I mean, granted, your Naga is pretty much getting free farm. She's got 1,300 gold already. Sh already, she should get a very quick relic, provided that the radiant side is not able to get some ganks off. And since they've got a lot invested into this bottom try lane, I think that the Naga will continue to get free farm. And I'm a little more fond of a Naga with free farm than I am of a. Chaos Knight with Free Farm. Chaos Knight with Free Farm is able to get a good gold advantage, but he's unfortunately not able to get the level advantage. On Chaos Knight ganking, level advantage is immensely important. It gets you the levels into Chaos Strike or crit, which will are what actually give him the ability to burst people down. He needs those levels of Reality Rift for the bonus damage as well as the as well as the Chaos Bolt levels, and it also gives him the mana he needs to spam his spells. Levels are extremely important on this hero, so... We're gonna see some advanced level pulling here from the Team Risk. This uh, hard level camp, um, it's it can also be pulled without destroying these trees. You can kind of pull it around like this, if you're exact right timing. It is, of course, easier just to take out these trees right here. So, very well done by these... Uh, these I was a little harsh on these supports before, but they're doing a pretty job now. Denying some experience also to the Tidehunter by killing that wave. And in fact, Tidehunter not doing anything in the lane is just going to go check the mid rune and maybe try out a gank mid lane. Mid lane, by the way, is going a little bit in Rubik's favor just because he got his faster bottle. He's able to spam that Fade Bolt, which of course lowers Queen of Pain's damage by, at the moment, it's a level 3, so 20... What is this reduction percentage? Do -do 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 26. So that's a significant debuff to the Queen of Pain, who is a res as a result is, does not have the last hitting power. She's going to try to get in range for a Shadow Strike. Rubik goes uphill and fogs her out. There you go. Queen of Pain does... She's taking a lot of Fade Ball damage. She's going to roam top, see if she can get the 6-minute room. 6-minute room is actually Lost bottle. Is actually bottom. Chen will get a Haste rune. He might try and gank mid with that. I mean, he doesn't really have a ganking creep. If he can take one of these... Shatter Tricksters, that purge is really, really effective on this, um, for level 1 ganks. The slow is immense. It's a... I don't know what the slow percentage is. It doesn't tell me. But at any rate. Alright, so, go ahead and take a quick look. I want to see what farm levels are at. I'm expecting Radiant to be ahead. Yeah, they're right. About 750 gold. That's because they have Chen in the jungle. And they've got a slight lead in last hits overall. Experience is very even, though. With no kills and no towers, we do see that um, these dire heroes seem to be roaming a little bit. They maybe went towards the mid lane, weren't able to get anything off. I didn't see any movement over there, though. They would probably need a smoke to actually get a kill. Do not see smoke in either of their inventories, and neither of them have boots either. But if they got off a good chain stun, uh, w only one shackle, and a level 2 burrow strike, they could definitely kill that Rubik with Quap's burst damage. Oh, we're going to see a net against the Tidehunter. Can we get into range for the shackle? Yes, we can. Here comes Sanki. He's way behind, though. Not Is he going to get in range for the burrow strike? There it is. Yes, it is. Here goes your first blood. Goes to the Shadow Shaman. An unfortunate support hero picks up the kill there. It would have been a lot better if the... Naga Siren had picked off that, oh, get that, there you go, just last hit on the catapult, those are worth a lot. She's got a thousand gold now, went for an arcane boot first, Radiant's which actually a lot of attack. pro heroes have been doing. The bottom lane, though, Dying in response to that tower. gank, it looks like the Chen has come over into the lane and has picked, off, 
has allowed people to, has allowed the radiant team to pick off the bottom tier two tower a uh, tier one tower tier one tower excuse me. Chaos Knight is six has not gone for a level of his ultimate instead three and three into Chaos Bolt and Reality Rift good build he's also picked up a Soul Ring for mana I do not see this a lot on Chaos Knight it's a good item if you want to go for an early ganking and up we are going to see three dire heroes coming in we may see it go onto this Chaos Knight he's tracked up here's the stun but big ice path catching people off Sand King's going to fall here actually will fall to the chin. In the meantime, here's the Shackle going against Chaos Knight, but Chaos Knight comes back in, picks off the Shadow Shaman, Quap comes in and does a little bit of work, might be able to pick off the Chen. Yeah, Chen will fall, Bounty Hunter gets the last hit there, but here's another Ice Path. It looks like, yeah, Bounty Hunter is really low, will fall to the Jakiro, so that's a, I want to say a 3-1 exchange there, Chen being the only one to go down, Chaos Knight getting one of those kills, and Jakiro getting some very important ones as well. Yeah, Chiro getting a kill, and I think Chen also got a kill. Yeah, one one one. So, very good engagement there by the D Radiant team, and they got the Tier 2 towers. So, excellently done on their part. Very good team fight. And I gotta say, a little bit of miscommunication on the Dire side, on the Dire side in terms of the chain stun, and Queen of Pain not getting there in time. I really think they should have waited for Quap to get there before they went in. So that's really going to set them back. It looks like Naga Siren has, has been forced to be. Looks like Rubik rotated up to the top lane. Wasn't able to get a kill, but did manage to steal Riptide. So some minus armor. A lot of minus armor, actually, because you've also got the Gush minus armor. Gush is only level... Yeah, level 2. So that's a um, very strong armor reduction here. CT team risk is... is so, attack. we're going to see a massive experience lead now. Oh, no, actually, no, not really. I'm surprised. Experience lead is rather low. 700, only 750 in favor of the Radiance team. I'm, uh, gold, though. 3,000 gold lead. I would say at this period of the game, experience lead is much more important than the gold lead. We have an invisible bounty hunter coming in on this Rubik. It looks like, yeah, Rubik's definitely going to fall here. Here's a net. Naga Siren will get the last hit there. Rubik falls, and he was a high level, so some big experience going the other way, and also some track gold. So keep in mind that as the Dire team in this mid-game begins to get more and more kills, that gold chart is going to go back in the way of the Dire, because that track gold is so massive. It, every single hero in range of the track gets an extra 50 gold. Bounty Hunter gets 150. All just for being in the area of effect. All for just being in that track AOE when the kill goes down. Looks like the top tower is Why going is to get pushed here. In the meantime, though, three heroes, three radiant heroes push on the top lane. Now they're going to smoke radiant up, come past the sword into a backstab here. This is going to be a big team fight. Tidehunter is in position, does radiant not have Ravage. He needs one creep kill to get that Ravage. He's going to try to get into position, get that Ravage up before the team fight. There it is. He's level six. Can he get into position? Chaos Knight initiates, he goes in, but immediately gets stunned up. We get a net down. Chaos Knight is very low, but here comes Tide. Massive Ravage hitting everyone. Rubik gets a triple kill by stealing the Queen of Pain ultimate. Huge steal on his part. T Naga's going to TP out. Will be able to get away. No, Reality Rift. Ugh, Reality Rift does not cancel the TP, but it can get you into position for that last hit. Unfortunately, not enough damage. Naga will get out, but massive team fight coming from the Radiant there. And, oh, that was a huge play by the Rubik, stealing that Queen of Pain ultimate. That was massive. Queen of Pain really has to be careful with her big ultimates, and so does Sand King. Sand King, of course, not level 6 yet, so he's not Dyer's quite ready to worry yet, but what? When she, she really should cast Sonic Wave and then immediately blink or immediately scream, because otherwise, as you can see, Dyer's the team fight advantage attack. goes the other way, because you've got Macropire up. You've got this Ravage up, and with those two spells, in addition to a Qua in addition to a Rubik ultimate, that's massive. Um, another thing that didn't happen there is that Naga Siren did not get off her ultimate. I think she got initiated on and was not quite able to do a lot. Now on this top lane, we're going to see that the Radiant are going to continue pushing, even though Ravage is down. Granted, Quap ultimate is down, and Sand King does not have his ultimate yet. Chaos Knight, of course, is already in position. He's getting an armlet first. It's going to give him a lot of damage as well as some survivability. Rubik also has got a four staff up already. Big gold on him. 
And your Quaff has not been doing very well, only 0-1. It's got some treads up for some movement speed as well as some attack speed. It looks like this Choo Choo Tower will fall. Track is down on a bunch of heroes, but they're really not able to take this team fight because Quaff's ultimate is down and Sand King doesn't have his ultimate yet. Looks like Shadow Shaman's gonna get initiated on, but there's a Naga Sleep coming in, but there's no big ultimates to follow up. Naga's gonna get stunned up. She's gonna take a lot of damage. Queen of Pain looks like she might fall also. No, she's gonna blink out just in time. Rubik will fall to the Bounty Hunter, but in the meantime, Shadow Shaman will die, and Queen of Pain will also fall. Chase is going against the Sand King and the and the Bounty Hunter. Now, Sand King is low. He will fall immediately. No, big three-man... <coughs> big three-man Burrow Strike will not be enough. He Sandstorms, but Tidehunter will be there to pick off the kill. No one's really low, even. than I can say for Kunkka. Although Rubik died, I think he actually bought back. Did Rubik buy back? Yeah, he did buy back. Holy crud. Bounty Hunter is in position, but no one's really low. He's going to do some damage to Chen and then immediately back off. And that team fight, these team fights are really going the way of the Radiant. And I have to say, there's really no reason for them to. It's, they don't really have. Everyone, both teams have big team fight ultimates. Sand King, of course, did not get a Burrow Strike off that fight. He doesn't have the mana to do it right now. He's the only. He, uh, he just barely has enough mana to Burrow Strike and then Epicenter, but he was not at full mana when that team fight started out. And he really didn't have the opportunity. Bounty Hunter's going to get picked up and thrown back in. There's a Chaos Bolt on him, but he's already invisible. He'll be fine. Gush goes down on Sand King just to do some damage. And it looks like that Radiant will take this tier 2 as well. All six exterior towers down 14 minutes into the game. This is a massive lead going the way of the Radiant side. And it looks like Naga's gonna get TP on. She does not have her ultimate, so unless she can get far enough away, she will go down here. No, she will be able to back off. Looks Radiant like she's going into a Vanguard. It's a nice item. She actually has very decent farm, considering that she's not been able to stay in land and farm. She's been forced to par participate in team fights. You can see she's got the most last hits of anyone on the map right now, and she does not quite have enough. Yeah, she's gonna pick up the Vanguard. Gets her, uh enough for the ring of health there, so she is very tanky. Doesn't do a lot of damage aside from her Riptide, which is maxed. I do like the fact that she's maxed Riptide and then Illusions. That's going to give her the most early game DPS. Granted, her Illusions are not very tanky, but they will be able to do a lot of damage given the minus armor coming both from track as well as from this Riptide. Now, I would like to see one of the supports, maybe Shadow Shaman or Sand King, going for a... Whatever, whatever the hell that item is. What is this item? Do 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 do. Medallion. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm new to Dota. Definitely haven't played this game ever before. I have no clue what these items are. Yeah, Medallion would be an excellent item on either of these two heroes, or even Bounty Hunter, if he can get the farm to pick it up. This will give a more single tar single target armor reduction. Eight, actually. I think is it, it's either six or eight. Oh, Rubik's got a haste and He's going to come in. Shadow... And it looks like Chaos Knight's going to come in too, but he's going to get hexed up. Looks like this gank is over. Going to have to back off now. That was a waste of some mana as well as a haster. And hey, Rubik's going to have to back off. Nope, he's getting blocked by Chen. Never mind. He's getting it's in the way. doesn't matter. Chaos Knight has his armlet finished as well as a cloak, so he's going to be very tanky against magic damage. Sam King Ultimate is not going to do as much as it could do. And because of this, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to burst him down. Granted, I think they might just go for the Rubik or the Chen first. Both of those heroes are easy to pick off, and if they can kill Chen before he gets his ultimate off, or Rubik before he gets a major spell steal off, that's going to be really important. They're going to go... Radiant are going to go into the Roche pit. I'm a little worried about this because top lane is not very pushed out, but all of the exterior towers are down, so the Radiant should be able to should take this a little bit unopposed. Tide has not been able to get a gush off yet. If he can gush, the mi minus armor should help in taking this out. Chen creeps are there to tank also, but here comes the dire team. They've got all of their ultimates off. This could be a big team fight. Naga just needs to sleep and go in. Yeah, here it is, but the dire Radiant has backed off. They're not in range. No, sleep is going to catch them. Sand King is going to get picked up. If he can get picked off before he can ult, that's going to be big. He needs to channel his ultimate. No, here's a huge ravage on everyone. Double damage on Rubik. Tidehunter is immediately going to pick off Sand King, and Jakiro will pick up the Queen of Pain, and Shadow Shaman falls as well. Three already dead for the Dire. They have to back up. Looks like S Sand King is not dusted. He should be able to get away. There's no invisibility detection on the Radiant side. I don't think invis detection. I don't see any. He should be fine. Uh, no, there's some sentries. He's going to fall. I fall. 
get brought down 4-0 oh on this team fight. Wow, that was really excellent positioning from the Radiant team that did that. You can notice that um, Naga came in like this from the back with sleep in, expecting the Radiant to be in the Roche pit, but instead they all backed out to here, this area, and as a result were able to prevent the sleep from affecting them, and as a result, Sand King was not able to get his ultimate off, and neither was Quap. So, big team fight going the way of the Radiant here. If they could have gotten those two ultimates off, I definitely think that team fight would have gone the other way. But as it is now, Chaos Knight has an Aegis, and these guys, they can try and go high ground now. Granted, they don't have a Ravage, that won't be up for another 87 seconds, so they will have to wait for that before they attempt to go high ground, but... Rubik, did he get a big spell steal? No. Shadow walk, no big deal. But I mean, they definitely have the advantage. I don't think they even used the Chen heal there. Yeah, it's off cooldown. They didn't even need to use Hand of God. Just having a very good game here. Naga going aggressive. She's going to get ganked from the back here. She's got some illusions, so she will see. She should just TP now. She's going to walk forward into the trees and TP out. She'll be just fine. They're not going to be able to get there in time to... Rubik's going to try to force step forward, but Chaos Knight gets a solo kill in the mid line against Queen of Pain. He slowed down, but the rest of the dire team are not able to get into position. Here comes Jakiro to back him up. Chaos Knight's actually going to go back in. Might be able to get a kill here if maybe? I don't know. He's going to go forward, but there's a lot of invis. Yeah, he's going to go in on the Sand King, but Sand King's going to get a two-man stun off. Channels his ultimate, gets it off. This could be big. He's going to do a lot of damage, but that cloak from... Chaos Knight is just making him too tanky. Here comes Naga, gonna get a net off. Jakiro is low, might go down. Yeah, he'll, he will fall? No. Yul sets her up on him, and he's gonna survive. Hand of God comes in, and it looks like Shadow Shaman will go down. Chaos Knight's very low. He will fall? No, he's got the Aegis. He's fine. Two to, no two to an Aegis pop from the Dire side, and in fact, Bounty Hunter will fall also to the Chen. Bounty Hunter unable to get away. Another huge team. I'm, I'm amazed that these team fights are being won by the Dire. They just. It's gotta be. They've got 10,000 experience lead. That's the only explanation because Dire are not playing badly. The Radiant are just coming on top of these team fights because they're just they're just higher level. I really think that's the only reason for it. I think that the explanation for that here is the kill graph because these 17 and 4 are. The kills are definitely in the favor of the Dyer right now. And... Oh, we're gonna see a huge Ice Pass. Sand King gets picked off immediately. No, he's invisible. No, he'll get picked off by an Anchor Smash. Oh, Chaos Knight's in big trouble. He's gonna fall. Quapult will pick him off. But Quapult gets stolen. Here's a huge Ravage. Quapult goes the other way. Ice Pass on four. Almost gonna pick everybody off. Sand King comes in for a stun. Rubik gets... Stunned up, and here comes Naga into a huge sleep. Might be able to pick off the Chen here. She's going to go ahead and cancel her sleep now. There's no... That was a little bit early on the Riptide. I think she will still be able to get... Yeah, she will... No, Jakiro gets stunned up. Three on one. Naga has to be careful. She's going to go down here. Yeah, she's going to... Yeah, she falls to the Jakiro there. And Sanking's sitting over here, and he's like, Shit, I can't do anything. What do you want me to do? I'm level seven. And, man, these... Ray aren't able to do anything. That was a beautiful team fight. That Ravage was massive coming from the... Coming from... Oh no, here comes Queen of Pain. I think she bought back. Should be able to get the kill on this Jakiro. No! Jakiro blink... Has he have a blink dagger? What the fuck happened to him? No, sent back from Chen. There we go. Chen sends him back. He survives. Chaos Knight comes in. And he's massive. And he wants a kill. Armlet's turned on. If... He's going to go ahead and stun up the Queen of Pain, burst her down before Shadow Shaman can even get there to stun. Shadow Shaman's like, I'm, fuck, 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 I'm out. Nope, 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 no. He's going to get picked up by Rubik. Thrown back, stun, stun, doesn't need the stun. Some crits, level 1 crits, only 148 damage. No big deal. There you go. Chaos Knight, picking people off. Level 13 already. 3,000 gold in the bank. What's he going to go for? it? He's going to sell his, whatever that was, I don't even, I don't even, oh, he sold the soul ring, doesn't need it anymore, and picks up the reaver, going straight into a heart after this, this is going to give him a lot of DPS, and he's just going to be tanky as all balls, no one on the radiant, uh, no one on the dire team is going to be able to pick him off, they just don't have the DPS, the physical DPS isn't there, and the minus, ar for the minus armor to take effect, and that cloak is going to protect him from the magical DPS, <sighs> so, here's the question, 
can Dyer really come back from this now? What I'm going to have to say is they need to get off an absolutely flawless team fight. Naga Siren is going to have to come in with the sleep gonna have for an, a channel, fully channeled epicenter in the middle of everybody and a quapult on everyone and a ward on top of everyone with some minus armor coming from the bounty hunter and the Naga. So if they can get that into a concentrated area, say like on a tier, on a high ground push, but they can't get picked off here. No, those are just illusions. Doesn't matter. Never mind. <laughs> I'm getting excited for nothing. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> If it's on the, like, say on a concentrated, like, before what happened was the dire, the rating were able to push into the base, into this high ground area, where they were able to spread out and avoid a lot of the Sand King ults and the Quap ult damage. If the dire can force the team fight in this area, this small concentrated area, and pick off two key people, the most important people are this Tide Hunter, who's not that tanky, only a thousand health. Granted, he's got a blink dagger, so he's going to be sitting back. He'll be hard to take out. But if you can, if you can get him, or if you can get the Chen, the Chen is the other massively important one. His, if you can get him before he drops that level 2 Hand of God, that team fight's different. Oh, D Rydian are already up on the high ground, and they picked up the Bounty Hunter. He's going to fall. Ned goes down, might be able to take the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, he's going to be able to back off. Rubik has a double damage, and this could be bad. Quap blinks in, gets the damage, but here's a massive Ravage hitting 3. Looks like Sand King will go off without getting his ultimate down. Jakira will kill Queen of Pain. She doesn't get her ultimate off either, and Chaos Knight kills Naga. This is a Rax. Definitely 4 dead. Rax is down. I hang a coral this is bad. I don't think that... Granted, Shadowstorm got his ult off before he died, but it's not. It's just going to be food for this Chaos Knight. Rax is down, and that might be GG right there. I don't know with the Rax down that... Even if they win a massive team fight... Oh, I don't know what he just... He just ulted, I guess. No good reason. He's going to go ahead and go straight... Yeah, double Rax. Two Raxes are going to fall here. I think Quab, your ultimate's got a 94 second cooldown. She used it. Wasn't able to get anything accomplished. Maybe if we can get a massive epicenter down here, they can maybe win a team fight. But even then, you're two racks down. You don't have the farm. I, I think this is over. I think Turn of Fate is going to take this game. I, probably Team Risk is not going to GG it out until they lose another team fight. Naga still has a sleep. Sand King still has an ep epi. But no, Quab's going to blink out. She'll be alright. Maybe stun. Yeah, stun. And also an ice bath on top of it. She's gonna fall. And there's a lot of your AoE burst damage. Doesn't look like there will be any Yeah, they're going straight for the mega creeps. Backdoor this tower doesn't need it. They don't really need the because of the Chen creeps, you don't need the the backdoor protection doesn't kick in. And there's the GG call from Team Risk. That's it, guys. There's your game. Disconnect from the Naga Siren, and that's everything. So, very well played here by Turn of Fate. Excellent team fights all the way through the mid game. Very early on domination from them. Be they had a better early game lineup. It looks like Ten Kings and some shenanigans over here. Oh, burst right down to the low ground. He might be able to make it out. Won't die at least. No, nope, they're gonna chase him. He's gonna fall to a gush. Yeah, Mega Creeps, and that's it. So yeah, some excellent team fights in the mid game coming from Turn of Fate as well. I mean, they they farmed a little bit better in the early game also, so that will allow them to that allowed them to really get into better position and just have better items. Take a look at the items here. You got a blink dagger on your tide, drums in a Vlad's up on your chin. Your Rubik got an extremely er early four staff for maneuverability. Your Chin's got an Arcane as well as part of an Agonim Scepter, and your, your 25 minutes, your Chaos Knight has an Armlet and a Reaver. He's got massive farm, so they just really, because of that mid-game team fight and the early towers that they got, they also did a very good job of early pushing. They were able to just completely overwhelm in terms of levels and items. Even though the gold chart was never that far in their favor until after a couple fights, so... Definitely well played by Turn of Fate here, and some very good play also from Team Risk side. I gotta give them credit. Naga played an extremely good game, and they didn't. None of the lanes really lost. It's just I don't think they were as effective as they needed to be to get into the position in the mid game that they needed in order to win the game. So, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a game from Alienware Arena. You can check that out at AlienwareArena.com for all the standings and updates.
info on that. Um, go ahead, if you like this game, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page. So you can stay updated on all the content that I'm going to bring you. And keep watching, keep liking the Dota, guys. This is Kingdom signing out. Thanks. GG, guys.